Hi, my name is Rod Cleef, and I'm the host of the Lifetime Cash Flow Through Real Estate Investing Podcast. And every week I interview multifamily rock stars, and we talk about how they've built incredible wealth for themselves and their families through multifamily properties. So hit the like and subscribe buttons to get notified every Monday when a new episode comes out. Let's get to it. Welcome back to Multifamily Rockstar. So as you guys know, this is where we interview people that are just flat out crushing it in our business. And we show the inside scoop as to how multifamily investors are creating massive success, not just in their businesses, but also in their lives. And as always, I've got my co-host, uh, who's the director of our massive action team for our warrior group on the call, Mark Nagy. Mark, there he is. What's up? Hey, Rod. Just uh, glad to be back at it after a very, very long 4th of July weekend. Yeah, I saw you were in Vegas and you looked a little, <laughs> little snockered on one or two of those pictures. So no, you're probably still recovering. No, that was just water because it was so hot, 110 degrees. Yeah. Just got to stay hydrated, you know? Yeah, whatever. Yeah, <laughs> whatever. Well, listen, uh, we've got a really nice guy on the show today. His name is Sean's Rice House. And Sean, um, man, he's done a lot of stuff. Um, he joined our Warrior Program in July of 22 last year. Um, he's been involved in 856 units as a limited partner since then and and just uh, just under 300 as a general partner he's got 600 under contract is partnered with other warriors and uh so we're gonna have a wide-ranging con conversation today he's got a big construction background but you know what i'm gonna let him tell you um sean welcome to the show brother thank you thank you very much yeah for sure so so you know tell us tell us you know you've got this incredible a lot of stuff that you've done. Maybe give us kind of like a highlight reel of your background uh, in general, and then, you know, why multifamily and kind of bring us current, if you would. Yeah, absolutely. So first of all, thank you very much for y'all having me on the show. I'm, I'm very excited. So um, just a little bit about myself. Um, I uh, started in the construction industry probably when I was 15 or 16. I actually started in the HVAC. Uh, side, uh, building duct work and installing air conditioners, but um, have been in construction for 25 plus years. Um, of, of those 25, I've owned a company for probably 22 or 23 of those years. Um, I, I started in here in Dallas. I was, I was raised here in Dallas, Texas. Um, ended up getting some opportunities to go overseas and work on American embassies throughout the world. Um, Africa, Tanzania, South Africa, Nigeria, uh, Sao Paulo, Brazil was my last stint where I met my uh, my current wife. Uh, so we ended up coming back to the States in uh, 20, 2003, uh, 2003 or 2004, started another company. Um, and about that time is is when I started getting into real estate. But I started on the single family side, as, as most of us do. Um, so I, I had some single family homes kind of coming up through, got back to Dallas, Come coming back to, um, I, I started a, a help start a energy as a, as, as a service company. I started an office in Dallas with them about five or six years ago. Um, and I learned about multifamily about three years ago. So when I figured out I could buy multifamily and, and partner and, and go through, through some masterminds and programs such as yours, um, we ended up partnering with some great great uh people in this area and in florida um and started investing in multifamily so i ditched on my single families i i have two left i got one on the on the market right now but um and i'll have one left after that and now i'm full-time i ended up retiring in january of this this year and i'm full-time multifamily real estate investing so oh congratulations i didn't know that brother that's fantastic so so you know i know that uh so so you said you met some great people in texas and in florida i assume those were warriors is that was that what you were alluding to yeah absolutely yeah yeah, yeah. fantastic well um you know i know that you you believe in education man and i saw that when i looked at your bio because you've gone to grant cardone's events you've gone you know you 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 checked out lifestyles unlimited which has been around a long time um uh you've gone to michael blanc's masterminds he's he's a good friend of mine and and uh you know why the warrior group man so i, I tell you like i tell everybody and this isn't because i'm on your show i promise you but i'm um, okay. going through some of these masterminds and i think you know the first thing that's extremely important is i think you have to invest in yourself number one right so once right. you invest in yourself and you get the knowledge that you need there's there's programs out there to help you do that and you know i started in grant Cardone's um, real estate summit and his and paid for his mastermind. Um, like you said, I went to 
um, some other summits, Michael Blanc, Lifestyles, uh, been to Sum Rock Summit, mm -hmm. um, and your summit. Is, and I was kind of weighing those after I had gone through Grant Cardone's. And, and I'll tell you guys, like I tell everybody, you know, Grant Cardone is is like it's for a great it's networking and it and it's to kind of expand your thinking. But if you truly want to know the nuts and bolts and get into the not necessarily the weeds, but get into really what you need to know about multifamily, your program, Rock Cleese program, is by far the best bang for the buck. Um, we we ended up going, like I said, to, to some rocks. I was weighing his at the same time I was weighing yours. And, you know, to be able to come to yours, get that education and get a personal coach um, was just, it's just unmatched, to be honest with you. Oh, thanks for that, brother. Thanks. Well, you mentioned nitty gritty. And I was going to ask you, because you mentioned you live in Texas, Florida. Uh, those are two of the biggest states right now that are getting hit really, really hard with the insurance crisis. That's affecting real estate big time and some people are just saying screw it and they're going and buying deals in other states some people like myself they're just changing underwriting how are you seeing insurance uh affecting those markets that you're working in right now for investing it's a big um it's a big effect on just like you said on the underwriting so you know we invest in we've looked at a lot of deals in houston which is kind of in that zone one with florida um, I'm in a, fortunately, I'm in a be little bit better location as far as insurance premiums go, but it, it's a massive effect. I think, you know, 12 to 15 months ago, um, just to give an example, we were at, I think, $550, $600 a door. And depending on what, like Houston, some of those quotes are coming back at $3,000 a door. Yeah, and, we got and a $3,000 quote. We got a $3,000 quote on one in Louisiana. Wow. It's like, Oh, and it's it was a screaming freaking deal. I'm like, oh my God, it killed me. Yeah, yeah, and it just blows the whole deal out of the water. So, and here's the other thing on top of that is that some of these guys are not giving us like soft quotes, you know, until two or three weeks before close. How do you underwrite that? You know, how do you figure that? So unless you have the experience and you've been in the market, you know, such as, as yourself, you kind of can start to estimate that. You see where those premiums are going, but it has a massive impact on on everything. So let me ask you a question. Tell us the three best things about you. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I think I have a, a, a good personality. I'm willing to to work with others. I love to learn, um, and I think that's very important. Like well, that's we obvious. Yeah, that's obvious from from your bio. Good lord. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, I, you know, I think it's important that you, you invest in yourself. Um, yeah. You know, I think obviously my construction background brings a lot to the table um, in in this multifamily world, and especially in value adds. Um, and you know, closing six or seven deals just in the in the past couple of years, I think is a is a, is a great um, is a great deal to bring to the to the table, especially with GPs that are, or LPs that are looking to get to, or to start their journey. So yeah, 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 and. Yeah, I was going to ask you whether and how, how you are utilizing that construction experience, you know, in your deals with Warriors, these these deals that you've done recently. Uh, and so you've been involved heavily in the asset management and the CapEx projects, I assume? Um, yeah. So that's kind of what we look for. I, you know, I don't know if you're having the same issue. We, we kind of looked at some Class A's. We have a small Class A in, in downtown Dallas. It was our first acquisition that we that we did. It's a little 18 door and um, turns out that those those you're buying another job, <laughs> but mm -hmm. uh, you, right. you, you have to live and learn, right? But so now we're looking for the the class C's underwrite really well, and if it's a heavy value add, um, man, it's right up my wheelhouse with construction and project management and, and things of that nature. So yeah, yeah, I love I love those kind of assets. Well, let me just say this to you, okay, because I've been saying this publicly on uh, two things. One, I want to hammer home what you just said about an 18 unit, how it's a job. It's, it's, it's the same amount of work to buy an 18 unit as it is to buy a 60, 70, 80, 100 unit, okay? And with a 60, 70, 80, 100 unit, you can have an on-site infrastructure, okay? Typically, 70 is the minimum, but with rents as high as they are now, it's probably less than that. But the point is, then you don't have to be there every freaking day doing everything because you got people on site. So that's what he meant by that. And then secondarily, I just, you know, 
I, I would just want to caution you on the C-class assets um, only because that's the demographic that's getting their ass handed to them right now with this inflation and gas and everything else. And so, you know, I, I mean, I know you know what you're doing. There's no question. And, and you can create the value through your incredible construction experience. But, you know, I, I, I just I, 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 you know, I lost $50 million, so I'm much more conservative than most. So I'm thinking way ahead, probably overthinking in some cases. But, um, you know, I'm a little worried about C, particularly C minus, like C minus, definitely D. I mean, those people are getting killed. They go pay, pay, paycheck to paycheck. You know, a lot, I, I saw an article that a lot of them are using credit card debt just to pay their living expenses. What could be wrong with that? Right. And huh. so, you know, just, just, um, just a caution there, Sean. That's all I would say on the C class because uh, I've been spouting that publicly a little bit now, just to be careful there. You mentioned your construction experience um, for the contractors and construction people that are listening that are saying, "Okay, how can I leverage my experience?" What 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 do you think you would recommend to them as kind of uh, the best way to get started or maybe value add into their first multifamily deal? You're talking about other people in the construct in the trades. Is yeah. that what you're saying? Okay, sorry. I did, did want to make sure I got that. Yeah, I mean, like we were talking about earlier, I think that, you know, being in the construction world helps you transition a little bit or bring those talents to the table to a GP team that may be looking for somebody that can asset management and, and asset management and project management. They're, they're, they're hand in hand. They're almost identical. If, you, if you've been in any type of project management, leading a team or leading an effort, um, it, it works really well. So I think if you're trying to come into it, find a team that's looking for, I'll give you an, a, an instance. We, we have a 300 plus unit under contract right now. I'm the only person in Dallas. So I'm the boots on the ground. And when they found out about, you know, the, the construction and the asset management, that's what kind of attracted me to them and vice versa. Everybody has what you need out there and, and everybody, you know, you have what somebody else needs is the way I like to say it. So is that, is that a value add deal? That, that 300 is unit, is that a value add deal? deal? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And how much, and just, how much per unit do you think? And hold on one sec, Mark, cause I want to expand on something you just said. Yeah. That varies even in Dallas. So in okay. this particular location, we have two, two different um, value adds going on. We have a basic upgrade and a premium upgrade. Our basic gotcha. upgrade, we estimated about $3,800 a door. And our premium mm -hmm. upgrade, we estimated about $8,000 a door. But here's what I'll tell you all, Rod. The 8,000 doors, in my opinion, won't um, it won't absorb that. In other words, mm -hmm. so I don't think we're going to end up spending 8000 to achieve our pro forma rent. So if we only need mm -hmm. $100 bucks to get to our pro forma, I think we're I think we're over budgeted on that, which is a good thing to be honest yeah. with you. I don't think yeah. dumping eight thousand dollars into a, a C plus asset is 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 going to work. Well, it, it may not, and I will tell you one of the one of the rough rules of thumbs that I like to use whenever I'm doing capex, which is what we're talking about here, guys. Cap capital expenditures is I like to ideally see a three year payback. So if I'm going to spend thirty six hundred dollars on a fit on a on a fix, I'm going to want to see you know uh, two hundred dollar. Was that right? Two times? Uh, am I doing that right? My math in my head. I'm going to want to see it paid back in thirty six months. So so that's a hundred bucks. Sorry, yeah. Th so thirty six hundred bucks would be a hundred buck. Uh, increase in rent. So, you know, that's the ideal. Now, of course, you're not going to always get that. You sometimes are going to, you know, but I definitely wouldn't go over five years because, you know, that then you're, you're, you're overpaying for the CapEx. There's just no question. You know, it's interesting. You were talking about asset management and project management. And on our warrior call yesterday, we have our group calls. And on the advanced portion of the call, we do in a fundamental portion and the advanced portion, I was talking about, you know, uh, I showed an outline of a weekly call that we have with uh, with one of our assets and we do it with both both assets and both of our newer assets now and you know it just lists out all the different K kpis the key performance indicators the metrics that we want to measure on a weekly basis and and li like you said if you've got some project management experience and uh you know, you're perfect for that. If you've got construction experience over on top of that, that's 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 like a massive home run. Uh, any trades, by the way, it doesn't matter what trade you are in. Um, you know, that's just incredible value add to a team. And as you guys know, this is a team sport. You know, you need that component, that asset management component, which is perfect for you. You need an underwriter, which is that analyst that you can lock in a room with a spreadsheet and throw raw meat in once in a while, and he's happy. That person or she. Uh, and then you need a mouthpiece like Rod out there talking to. <laughs> 
brokers and sellers and investors and so on and so forth. So, yeah, that's uh, that's that's fantastic. So you've really found your slot in in these warrior teams that you've either put together or joined. So you know, really impressed with that, brother. Well, that's what I was going to ask. How for the you know I get this question a lot. How do these teams come together? You mentioned you're the guy that's in Dallas. Did you? find the deal then bring it to others for skill sets did they find the deal then come to you did you already have the pre-existing relationship with the team how did that team come together so it's a little bit of both but the one in particular that we're talking about um they actually had the deal um <laughs> oddly enough they had a sister deal over in fort worth our our neighbor next door um and we were talking about that one when i found out about this one so um, it just happened to be that this was a little bit bigger project. Um, I didn't think that we had the team put together. Well, that came full circle and, and it came back and, and we kind of all started talking. But to answer your question, it's network. It, it, it's network. It's funny. I mean, we talk about all these other um, you know, masterminds and stuff. But when the Warriors go <laughs> to another mastermind and they find out that they're Warriors or they know each other, it deepens that connection. And sometimes mm -hmm. people already have a deal and, and you just kind of start networking and find out what, what people need. And if you're in the, in the, in the hood and, and you got somebody with boots on the ground, it, it's usually a pretty good fit. So yeah. network. Yeah, love it. So tell me what the best piece of advice you feel like you've ever gotten. And this could be life advice, could be real estate advice. Could, you, you choose the topic, but uh, what's some of the best advice you've ever gotten, brother? Man, that is a, I, I don't know if I can answer that in five minutes. Oh, or just, just, less. all right. Well, well, you know, or maybe some of the worst advice then. I mean, we could go <laughs> both sides of that equation. You know, think back to, think back to, you know, uh, things you may have heard. And if you, and if I stumped you, I can come up with something else. No big deal. You know, I, I don't know. I think that some of the best advice, uh, you know, that I've ever gotten is, is uh, we, we mentioned it several times is, is educate yourself. You know, yeah. invest in yourself. I, I think that is by far, and I didn't learn that until later in life. Is is yeah. you know maybe that advice was given to me you know two three years ago, and today I think sometimes that changes throughout your journey and throughout your life, right? But I, I would say invest in yourself, man. Get the education yeah. that you need in order to be successful. No, there's no question, and and you know. I, I found the value of coaches, I don't know, maybe 25, 30 years ago. And before then, I didn't. So I made every freaking mistake in the book. In fact, at my boot camps, you know, I hand out those shirts that say, hashtag, ask me how I know, because oh, I made every freaking mistake in the world and say, you know, don't do that. Ask me how I know. And, and you know, it's interesting. I, I talk about this is, you know, like Michael Jordan at the height of his career, had like six, seven coaches. I mean, he had a nutrition coach, uh, lifestyle, you know, relationship coach, assistant coach. Uh, uh, I, I could go on a uh, nutritional coach and on and on and on. He's the best in the world. And, and you know, and it's a shame that I didn't get that memo sooner because I'd be much further along than I even am now had I known that. And uh, so I, I appreciate you talking about that because I will tell you, yeah, uh, you know, learners are earners, and you know, I'm I I I went to Grant Cardone's Growth Con, you know, just to just to network yeah. and stuff. I spent I twenty you grand. Took to a picture there. Oh, did we? Forgive me, buddy. I, I had, I literally, I felt like it was one of my events. I probably did 200 selfies with people. And, <laughs> and so did. I lose track. Forgive me. But, uh, but you know, it's so, so yeah, I'm, I'm still, you know, it's not like a do as I say, not as I do kind of a thing. And I went to Tony Robbins business mastery a few months ago. I'm so, yeah, no, I mean, this is, uh, this, is, and, and, you know, we've been taught to, that we learn in college. The problem is most college professors have never done business. They've never started a business, right? And so, you know, I believe in, you know, like you obviously do now, Sean, is 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 thought leaders and masterminds and boot camps. And, you know, I show this picture at my boot camp with me with hundreds of lanyards uh, around my neck and my arms from these boot camps that I've gone to because, you know, that's really how I how I educated myself. I never went to college. I agree. I mean, I think it's one of the best things you can do is educate yourself so yeah yeah if you're considering getting some guidance uh you know so that you can experience the life you want this year instead of you know three four five six years from now or maybe you thought you might be more effective in your networking and and in joining an ecosystem text the word crush to seven two three four five and it's just to see if the warrior program might be able to help you overcome any challenges that you have or that challenge and so that you can accomplish what you want with 
you know, with lifetime cash flow, because that's why they, we call our podcast Lifetime Cash Flow, and that's what our warriors are creating, warriors like Sean here. And, and I'm going to tell you, I feel like we fail any warrior that doesn't join our program, and I mean that sincerely. I told Sean that before we started recording, because it's just so extraordinary. I mean, it, the success. I, on our coaching call last night, I talked about the deals that have closed in the fit that people announced in the Facebook group. And, and I was going on and on and on. There were so many freaking deals that closed just in the last 60 days. It was insane. And so, um, yeah. So anyway, if you're interested, text the word crush to seven, two, three, four, five. And, you know, we will do everything we can to help you absolutely crush it in this business. I've seen a lot of those as well. I've seen some, some awesome loan assumption deals. I saw a guy, mm -hmm. uh, you know, one of the students get a, a, a deal, a 200 and something units at what, three and a half percent interest because yep, they assumed yep. another that loan. I've seen, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I've seen creative financing, so many different ways to get deals. And I wanted to, to bring this up just because, Sean, I know you, on your bio, you started in 2010, right? Right after the 2008 crash. And a lot of people don't even realize, just statistically, the real estate market didn't hit the bottom until four years, you know, the, the quote unquote bottom until 2012, four years later. And, and things are moving very slowly right now for us. It feels slowly. What are some of the similarities and, and maybe some of the differences that you're seeing and with what's going on today compared to back in 2010 when you first got started today seems a lot more volatile um it, it seems to have taken that that those peaks and valleys are a lot shorter in other words you know it's not a it's, it wasn't a four-year or five-year cycle it's like it went from you know january or, or february march of last year to the height to to today, you know, we were at, you know, sub 3% interest, you know, 12 months ago. And now we're at, you know, to get a bridge loan is like 9%, you know, even, even the agency loans are, are five and a half, six, six and a half percent. So it just seems like it's a little bit more volatile. I don't have, you know, the, the 20, 25 year track record, but, you know, the single, and I was in single family at that time, but um, it just seems like it's just a little more volatile today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I don't think that the, the crash is, and we're heading into a crash. I'm just going to tell you, anybody tells you otherwise, uh, unless the government prints another two or three trillion and throws it in, which they may do, and then God help us with inflation. But, you know, uh, I don't think it's really hit yet. I think it's coming. We're not, so we're starting to see deals, a lot more deals coming online, but I don't think the sellers have really been knocked on the side of the head with a two by four yet. And, uh, but I do believe it's coming. And I know there's a lot of, capital on the sidelines that's going to go after these larger deals for sure um and so uh you know kind of i i'm create i've created an opportunity fund myself i'm going to start raising money to to take advantage of distressed assets and um uh, but uh, let me shift gears for a second so so you know you're obviously very motivated you've done lots of different things in your career what what inspires you brother what what's the driver so my why is is my family um you yeah. know my, my wife is uh has a disease it's called uh retinitis pigmentosis so she has about 15 percent uh vision left so oh. she's my driver there's no current research going on it's very minimal because it's a very uh oh. scarcity disease i guess it's very rare um oh. so w we want to help with that um you know i obviously want to leave a legacy for my kids i want them to have you know something for their kids so you know and i want to spend more time with my family you know one of the yeah. biggest reasons I jumped ship and I, I retired was when I moved back to Dallas and I started this division for this energy company, um, they had me on the road like three, four weeks out of the year or three, four weeks out of the month. I was getting home. Wow. It started off getting home. You know, I was Monday through Friday, right? And getting home on the weekends. Then it went to, I was getting home once every two weeks to once a month. I'm like, this is it. I'm missing my, my, my son's soccer games. I'm missing my right. kids' activities and and so for me, it's, you know, and for a lot of people, it's their family. But for me in particular, I have a couple of reasons, my wife and and being there for my kids. Wow. Wow. I didn't know that. Uh, that's uh, man. I, I uh, I'm sorry to hear that about your wife. Um, you know, so so uh, one more question. Um, is there a quote that you like that you live by? Is anything is there a quote that, you know, like for me, I've got a Tony Robbins quote I love, live with passion. Just, you know, a, encompass passion in your life. Is there a quote that resonates with you? Again, it's it's yeah. it's almost like, you know, you know, what's the 
what's your driving factor? What's what's the best things? They they kind of change, you know, as your journey changes for me. Um, and and you know, I think the the quote right now is is you know massive action you know and you say massive all- freaking action massive, massive action. freaking a- you know yeah. right now in the state of my journey it's about taking action and and that's for me that's my driving factor i get up every day for my family i want to get out there it's it's you know grant cardone one of his one of his success is my duty that's one of yeah, the love quotes it. that i love like it as well so yeah. there's a couple and they all exchange as, as you you know go through your journey in life but those are probably the top ones right now yeah i i actually have that one on the wall in my uh in my exercise room as well i've stolen two or three of them from him comfort kills is another one of his that i love yes um uh, yeah so so um what suggestions would you have for someone that is sitting on the sidelines you know they see these economic headwinds they're thinking okay maybe they're maybe rod knows what he's talking about and there's going to be some opportunity and but they haven't made a move yet you know they they know they want more for themselves and their family they'd love what you have the ability to have retired from a from a regular quote unquote w2 to to really create your own time freedom you know what would you tell someone like that um you know again i it goes back to I'm a very simple person. I would say, you know, educate yourself like we've been talking about. Um, find a good team that that has some experience going through this. Um, just like you said, there's going to be some some really, really good deals coming out in the next. There's going to be some some uh, opportunities out there for all of us. So don't be scared. Get out. Start networking. Get with a the team. There's a ton of meetups. You know, in every city, no matter what city you're in. Um, so get out there and, and just start networking and get get the education and get with a team that's been through this and and, and take action. Massive that's it. action. Massive freaking action. Yeah, I love it. Uh, you know, you go, you guys, if you haven't heard me talk about it, if I didn't bring it up on the intro of this of this episode, get your butt to my freaking boot camp. So we're gonna be like a thousand people in Orlando in September, 15th to the 17th. Awesome, buddy. You'll get to meet Sean. It's not a big sales pitch. I talk about my coaching for about a half hour and the rest of it's full on training, drinking through a fire hose. So uh, I hope you can make it and, and the price is ridiculously reasonable. So anyway, well listen, bro. Brother, I appreciate you coming on. This has been a lot of fun and uh, uh, really uh, enjoyed uh, spending a little time with you like this. Thank you so much. It's such an honor to be on your program. Thank you very, very much, Rod. So one other quick thing. We encounter so many people that are frankly frustrated. You know, they're looking in the mirror and they're frustrated that they haven't been able to escape the rat race. They haven't been able to build cash flow to the point where they're able to have financial and time freedom with their families. You know, and maybe they see other people buying real estate and creating, you know, incredible cash flow. And they think, well, it's just scary. You know, buying apartments is intimidating. And I get it. But see, that's why we created our Warrior Mentorship Program. They're our coaching students and they've had extraordinary results. My students, I've been teaching about five years and they own upwards of 140,000 units now that we know of, right? And we feel like it's just getting going. Now we're looking to grow this group and really take it to the next level and honestly believe that the greatest transfer of wealth could be upon us right now with this current economic environment. Everything's going on sale. So we're looking for people who want to follow a proven framework, really like a blueprint or a map, literally step by step. And then they're able to leverage our systems and our incredible network to raise money and equity, to find deals and close those deals and build partnerships really nationwide. So if you're interested in finding out more about how you can become more in our incredible network and take advantage of the unbelievable opportunities that are upon us, you can apply to my Warrior Mentorship Program by texting the word CRUSH to 72345, or you can go to mentorwithrod.com. And what we'll do is we'll set up a call so you can check us out and we can check you out and see if it's a fit. Now, again, you can go to mentorwithrod.com or text the word CRUSH to 72345 to apply, and we will speak soon.